Okay, so the Cowboys got their job in their lifestyle because early Spanish explorers and settlers lost their horses and cattle. And these animals quickly became uh, adapted to the uh, American plains, okay? The horses would live in wild bands and bands of wild mustangs. Uh, Texas cowboys would capture these wild mustangs and uh, rode them to herd up the cattle and all that. Of course, that is where the Bronco Busters came from. They actually, you had people that actually went around, uh, they made their living being Bronc Busters. I mean, they would, they would actually, that was their job to get on these wild horses and try to tame them so that people could ride them. Uh, that's a tough way to make a living. But Bronco right? horses are bred uh, for the, because they have to twist and buck at the same time. Yes. Okay. They twist. Yeah. Twist. No, that's good information. She's got good information. The wild cattle were called longhorns, and they adapted to the Texas Plain environment very successfully. Now, the, the reason they're called long, longhorn is from tip to tip, it's very their long. horns are like six feet long. Okay, so it's long horns. Okay. No, we should, uh, yeah, we just get they would fight off wolves, bears, and other natural enemies. Uh, they could live in very dry climate, endure freezing winter temperatures, and brutal summer heat. So these are a very durable animal, and they're big. Did you ever see them? Some Texas had, Texans had started cattle ranching in the years even before the Civil War, but it was not very profitable because they didn't have anywhere to sell their meat. Okay, there wasn't a big need for it at this point in time. However, the end of the Civil War and the Western expansion of the railroad led to major cattle industry, okay? Because so now you can ship them back east to the big cities, okay? So ranchers hired cowboys to gather the cattle from the ranch in South Texas and drive them up to Kansas, and Abilene, uh, Kansas becomes the big port, okay? In 1867, uh, an enterprising cattle dealer named Joseph McCoy bought land, set up a stockyard, which is basically a series of corrals, uh, in Abilene, Kansas, okay, and near the railroad. Then he advertised in Texas newspapers that he would buy cattle. So the response was quick, so they drove the cattle up there. You know, the first year, 35,000 heads of cattle was driven up, okay? By 1871, it was about 600,000 head of cattle being driven up to Abilene and shipped back east. This guy was smart. He sets up the stockyard where people does the work, brings the cattle to him. He buys them. He's got people that loads them on the train, takes them back east where he has already sold them. So he's making money he's without ever man. having to touch a cow. Oh, he's, he's doing his saying, I'll pay you. Smart guy. Okay, hold on. All right, now the Chisholm Trail, one of the first and most popular trails was called the Chisholm Trail. It was named after a guy named Jesse Chisholm, okay? Uh, he helped survey uh, several trails in the Indian Territory. Uh, he originally operated trading posts in Oklahoma. He was respected and well-treated by his Indian customers from many tribes. Uh, during the Civil War, he moved his family of 13 children, 11 of them adop adopted, to Kansas. Okay. Now, the Chisholm Trail was about 800 miles long. Okay. That doesn't sound like much, but if you're on horseback, that's, that's a long journey. Okay. 800 miles? Uh, 800 miles. That's a long journey. Okay. Cattle, cattle drives followed this trail from Texas through Oklahoma into Kansas. Uh, then you had the Goodnight Loving Trail, named after two other guys, which was used in later cattle drives, and it was over 1,000 miles long and went from central Texas through New Mexico territory and into Colorado. Oh. Yes, Kate. Uh, about the Chisholm and the Good Night Loving or that, there were, uh, there's a movie called Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there is. There's all, there's all, it's mentioned in a lot of the westerns and things. It really that movie's hilarious. Like, is that yeah. next thing we're thinking about? Oh, yes, right. just one. Now, Cowboys. You watch it? Okay. Cowboys were often just that. They were boys. Okay. Most of them were just just barely getting into their teens. Okay. These are 14, 15 year old boys. Okay. They were hired by ranchers to round up wild cattle and drive them north. Even the promise of a market made a cattle business in South Texas an uncertain gamble, though. And the pay was poor for the work that they did. Okay. 
As many as one third of the cowboys was Hispanic or African American. Uh, these young boys, some teenagers, and a few older or more experienced men uh, would gather up the cattle and drive them to Kansas. Okay? Now they would work from sun up to sundown for weeks. Okay, so cowboys would gather fiercely independent steers and ornery cows. And if you've ever dealt with big animals like that, they got a mind of their own. They're going you can you can make them do some things, but when they make up their mind, they don't want to play anymore. They don't want to play anymore, and it's hard to get them to get them motivated. Okay, they they herded them on horseback or use a lariat to rope them. A lariat is a rope. Uh, cowboys were often pulled off their horses by the thousand pound steers. They were just as likely to attack a man on a horse as they were not to. Okay? Uh, cowboys were gored by the angry cows. They were thrown from their horses. They were dragged through thorny bushes, stomped by horses or cattle. They would suffer broken bones, serious injuries, and sometimes they would die from the results of the accident that they were involved in. Yes, ma'am. Um, my dad showed me this John Wayne movie about these um, uh, these boys who were hired by... Yeah, the cowboys. Yes, and, the it, and it shows them, like, on the cattle drive. Yeah, yeah, that's a good movie. We need a lot right. of it, they... When <laughs> It would be nice if we could watch some of these old movies. That would be good kind of good. When, when the cattle was finally wound up, well, maybe, well, maybe we'll see about that. When the cattle was finally, stop talking. When the cattle was finally uh, rounded up and kept in makeshift corrals, the men used a hot branding urn to burn the brand or identifying mark into the ranch of the uh, of their ranch into the hide of each animal, and that proved that the animal belonged to that ranch. Like if, my, if the name of my ranch was the Circle S, my brand might be an S with a circle around it, okay? Um, and it's made out of metal, and it's got a metal s stick to it, and you have two or three of these things, and you put them in a fire, and you get them just red hot. And then somebody brings one of the steers in, and you they get that thing down on the ground, and you got three of them, depending on the size of the steer, you got guys laying on top of this thing trying to hold it down, and someone takes this red, red hot piece of metal with a symbol on it and puts it on his back flank, his hilt, if you would, and <laughs> burns that's, it right into his that's hide. Okay? No, it really doesn't hurt them that do bad. That I, I, I doubt if it feels that great, but it doesn't hurt them that bad. But it shows that it belongs to them. Yeah, they would brand their horses too if they belonged to a, a certain ranch. Uh, they would brand. But that way, they would know if it belonged to them or not. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my grandpa does woodwork and he brands like everything he makes and stuff. Okay. Carter, real quick. Can they do that to slaves? What? No, if you if, if you if you try to if you try to brand a, a person, it just it scars up. It doesn't it doesn't come out quite right. So they would unfortunately they did mark them. I mean, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I have a question. Yes. I'm pretty sure nowadays it's just like priests with um, this uh, fur off them, where they're supposed to name it, and they just put it in the pattern like that, and they don't. Okay. Yeah, they have different ways to do it nowadays, but... Yeah, they got different ways, but they still tag them. Yeah. I mean, now they tag them in the ears and things. Yes, yeah, Scala. I mean, like, bulls, they're, like, trained to be angry and, you know, and, like, throw the first person off. Well, and, yeah, yeah. And, like, also, uh, they actually, like, rank them, so, like, the uh, best rider usually gets the uh, angriest yeah. bull. Well, you have, you, you draw, yeah, you draw, you're talking about rodeos, you, you actually draw a ticket, and you, you don't know what boy you're going to get, you know, you, you draw, you, you just draw a number, and then whatever you draw, that's what you ride, or attempt to ride. All right, y'all, what's okay. All right, now, some renters took all the cattle they could find on the drive. Many preferred uh, to be very selective. They would only take four-year-old steers because they bought more, you know, more uh, money at a higher price. Uh, they also took cows and year old calves, which could be fattened up or sold to northern ranchers. Uh, if, a new, if, a, if a calf was born on the trail, then they would usually just kill it, and they ate, had a little extra something to eat that night because they could not keep up. 
Okay, you cannot keep up on the trail. Okay? When they were ready, the cowboys would start to herd, herding the cattle north. This was difficult for the first two weeks because the cattle were anxious to return to the wild plains. Okay? Uh, and they often would break away from the herd and they would have to go get them and bring them back. And all this is taking time, okay? After about two weeks, they would sort of settle in and you always had the one lead steer that the rest of them, if, as long as he was playing nice, the rest of them usually would play nice also, okay? Now, the trail boss was usually the most experienced cowboy, and he took the lead and scouted the trail out ahead, okay? Uh, the point rider then rode in the front of all the cows, okay? Then you got swing riders that rode on the side of the herds up near the front, Okay, and they would keep them trying to keep them from going off in direction. You had the flank riders, they were more on, still on the side but towards the back. Okay, and then you had the most uncomfortable job ever on a cattle drive the guys that drove uh, rode drag. That was the guys that rode behind them, and you got 3,500, 5,000 steers on dry prairie dust everywhere and these guys are bringing up the rear so they're they're getting all the dust okay now they had a guy how about the what, what about the cook the cook's in a wagon on back behind them okay the cook was the man who drove the chuck wagon cooked the meals he also served as the doctor if they needed a doctor because i know when i think i need a doctor the first thing i think of is the waffle house shelf um, okay. uh, food might include beef, but more often was beans, sourdough bread, uh, and any kind of wild animal that might be killed along the way, such as rattlesnakes, wild birds, or rabbits. Yes, Parker. Uh, why can't they just take a candle and stick the baby that like one of things had on the back home? Well, typically candles are in. I know, but you could just find a camel. Yeah, you find a camel. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you eat, do you eat hamburger? Yep. Do you eat steak? Do you think it committed suicide? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It didn't die of old age. It was slaughtered for you to eat. So what's the difference? They killed it, they ate it. No difference. Okay. No difference. They couldn't keep up. There's no ways to keep up. Okay. A herd travel 10. Here you go. Okay. We're talking 800 miles, 1,000 mile trips. They would travel 10 to 12 miles a day. 10 to 12 miles a day on a drive. This gave them time to drink their fill of water. They had to uh, graze a while so they would not lose weight. Because you don't want the, your cattle to lose a bunch of weight on this journey. Otherwise, they're not going to be worth as much money. So they got to keep them fattened up. So they got to let them eat. You got to take the time to let them eat their fill and then drive them more. Okay? Uh, so I heard that 3,000 cattle might stretch out more than a mile long. Okay? The men stopped at noon to change horses. So this is why they had to have a lot of different horses and all of okay? Uh, you had a guy that was a wrangler, uh, and his job, he, he looked after the extra horses because he would have 10 to 15 guys on this cattle drive. Each one of them had eight horses because they would constantly have to change horses to keep a fresh horse, okay? So he was riding one, and the rest of them were just, the wrangler has got them, and he's bringing them all up along way back behind everything else, okay? Yes, Taylor? Uh, at night... When they weren't, you know, moving, did they have somebody like keep posts to make sure they, they did? They did, and we're going to talk about that in fact. They did. Okay? Uh, so at night, you had two cowboys that would ride the herd around the outside to try to keep them settled, okay? One would start over here, one would start over here, and they would just circle, okay? And they, the whole idea is they're trying to keep them settled and to keep an eye out for rustlers or wild animals or anything like that because it doesn't take a whole lot to set off a cow or a steer if he gets spooked. Yes? That would take like over 100 days to do like in a thousand mile trip because like if you drive a trip 12 miles a day and do a thousand miles, it take uh, over 100 days. It would, it, would, it would take about three months. It would take about three months to make a drive. So okay. Uh, cattle were easily spooked 
might stampede wildly in every direction. Lightning storms would often result in stampedes. Bears, wolves, unexpected dangers such as snakes, even a skunk could set them off, okay? Um, gunfire, any kind of loud noise would send them into, a they would start running, they would panic and run. And when they, when they went crazy like that and took off, nothing was safe. They just ran everything over. Okay, the only thing, if, if a big tree, they would go around, wagon, they would knock down, you, they would knock down, they would just run you down, okay? Uh, so cowboys could be killed or injured during a stampede. Uh, river crossings were also dangerous for men as well as the beast. Uh, flash floods, poisonous cottonmouth snakes, treacherous river bottoms, all would lead to injuries and death. So this is not an easy job. The life of the cowboy was filled with danger, backbreaking labor, an adventure. The Cowboys was grateful to complete their drives which would last three months or longer. Okay? All right, now we're going to hand out the handouts. Hand out the handouts. Hand out the handouts. Hand out the handouts. You hand out part of them. And they bring the rest back to me. Snappy, snappy. Hey! Stop, 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 stop. Folks, hey, I got it on recording right here. People seize this, okay? Anybody can pull this up. So they see how many times I have to say, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. You're my witnesses. I'm going to start calling names and draw some pictures and stuff. So they can know who I'm talking about and when it's on video. Now I got them in the back with scissors trying to cut yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's Van this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why she tied her hands together. It, um, well, no, she's no, just no. harder, that's why. Well, well I think you guys got hurt. What's the rest of it? Is it like that was it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Actually, you are the second class, so that worked out well. All right, now. We're going to go over this real quick, and then I'll hand you up your homework questions. As soon as you quiet down. Van, sit down. All right. This is going to be a lot of repeat. It's, a, it's an easier read, okay? So let me get through it so I can get your questions out to you. Cowboys played an important role in the selling of the West. Ranches was big industry, and cowboys helped run the ranches. They herded cattle, repaired fences, and built and took uh, and buildings and took care of the horses. Cowboys often worked the cattle drives. This was when large herds of cattle was moved from ranch to market uh, and were sold, okay? A lot of the original cattle drives went from Texas to the railroads in Kansas. Cattle drives were tough work. Cowboys would get up early in the morning and guide the herd to the next stopping point for the night. Uh, the senior riders got to be at the front of the herd. The juniors had to stay in the back where it was dusty. Okay. A cow started in the back. Yep. They were usually, they, everybody started in the back. You're right. They were usually around a dozen cowboys for a good sized herd of 3,000 cattle. Uh, you also had your trail boss, your cook, and a wrangler. Remember, the wrangler is the guy that looked after the extra horses. Okay? Each spring and fall, the cowboys would work on the roundup, and this was when the cowboys would bring all the cattle from the open range uh, because they would let them roam free out there most of the year. Okay? Then they would gather them up, bring them in, brand them, and get ready to go up to Kansas. Now, the most important possession any cowboy uh, had was his horse and his saddle. The saddles were often custom made, and next to his horse was probably the most valuable thing that he owned. Okay, horses were so important that horse, uh, horse stealing was considered a hanging offense. Dang if you were caught stealing someone's horse, there was no trial. If they caught you with another man's horse, they just you found down a rope, found a tree, and justice was served as far as they were concerned. Oh, okay. Trouble? Cowboys wore special clothing that helped them with their jobs. They wore large hats. Uh, the brim actually came way out and helped protect them from the rain and the elements. Uh, it wasn't until they, uh, when they modernized and started riding pickup trucks that they started folding them up on the sides. That's why the cowboy hats of the day is folded up. Because when they got in the truck, three guys would, across the front seat, their hats would be flopping all over each other. Okay. They also wore uh, cowboy boots with pointed toes that uh, helped them from falling out. If they did uh, slip out of the stirrup, it would come out instead of going through uh, so they wouldn't get hung up and get drugged. 
Uh, they wore chaps on the outside of their legs to help protect them from bushes and cactus. What are chaps? Uh, they're leather yeah, so they're like things big, that those like, things on, and it helps protect. Around, no. Most cowboys only own like one pair of pants, so he couldn't afford. You know, he couldn't get his pants all ripped up, so he had chaps that he wore. Now, that, that now was made out of leather that would help protect him. Yeah. 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 Now they wear them just for looks. Mm -hmm. They don't serve any purpose as far as bull riding. Um, no, another thing that they wore was a bandana. A bandana was a very useful, they, would, they, could, they could stream water through it, help fill the water. They would put it around their, you know, their mouth and nose to keep the dust off. Uh, they could, I mean, hold their hat, they would tighten and tie it around on the top of their hat and under their chin if it was windy to keep it from blowing off. It was, it was a lot of things that they could do with a bandana, okay? Uh, the rodeo became a competition, of course, of what cowboys did. Interesting fact, you do have some, uh, uh, some of your questions comes from the interesting facts about cowboys here, okay? And now we're just gonna hand out your homework questions. We're gonna call it good.